Hello. Having watched the Red Beats experiment already, now we will discuss what we can learn from it. Welcome to the Red Beats lessons video. The first lesson would be that the results will not get better because the system is stable. So, how do we know that the system is stable? Well, that's why we have charted the numbers. We collected the results by the number, meaning the number of red beats uh, obtained by everybody. And then we charted all these numbers into something called a control chart. Now we can see here a control chart for one of the experiments run some time ago with a class of students, where we run the experiment for five days. What you can see here is the, all the red points, they represent the number of red beats obtained by each one of the participants in turn. This is a chronological series, uh, also known as a time series. And so what we have here is all of the various uh, number of red beats that everyone uh, obtained. Now, we have used these numbers to calculate three values. Those three values are the average, the upper control limit, and the lower control limit, which are listed here as upper U for upper control limit, the average here, a uh, purple line at the center near 10, and then the lower control limit here at the bottom. What these uh, two lines represent, the upper and the lower control limit, is something known as a, a range of natural variation. That means that the way in which the numbers are calculated, the, number, the way in which the numbers are coming out of the system of the experiment, it indicates that the production could go as high as uh, about 18 and as low as about one uh, red beat. And so this range is a range where um, the number of red beats are pretty much expected. And all the variation that we see here is actually due uh, to the um, system of production as I'm going to explain also in the next lesson. Now the second lesson from here, having already understood that this is a stable system for the reasons that I just indicated, the second uh, lesson here is that all variation came from the process and not from the workers. Uh, this has important managerial implications because what it means is that there was no merit in somebody who got a smaller number of red beats, let's say any, one, any of the ones who got less than the average, it's not like they were actually doing anything better than the ones that got higher numbers than the average. The third lesson is that if for whatever reason you seem to be unhappy with the results uh, from this experiment, then what you need to work on is the system of production. Compare the results against the client requirement. In the simulation, the client requirement listed here as T for target is five red beads. What the customer wanted is that we would produce no more than five red beads. So the, the, the acceptable region, if you would, would have been just between you know, zero and five. Now, how often did we ever meet that requirement? Really, um, only once in 28 times. So this is almost a result that you may think that is really impossible to achieve in a consistent way. So what is the system of production? If, as, if it is true, as I just said, that the variation that we saw in the red beads um, really was due more to a system of production, much more so than to the relative merits of the various um, workers, then what is a system of production? Well, we're going to define a system as a set of factors or causes that work together to accomplish a certain objective, a common objective. Now, the system of production, in a bit more detail, is going to be made of the following components. We're going to have a number of procedures which must be followed in order to achieve the, that objective in order to, to, to produce, in this case, the beats. As you recall from the simulation, there were certain very specific procedures, like for instance, approach the, 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 the bin with all the beats uh, from the long side, and then dip the paddle at a 44 degree angle, etc. That would be the procedures. And those determine what was going to happen with the actual outcomes, that is, the number of red beats. Next we have the materials. In the case of our simulation, the materials were the beads themselves and the combination of reds and whites. Uh, speaking more broadly, when we talk about materials, we also mean things such as uh, supplies, raw materials, data, etc., that we use to do our work. Uh, in third place, a system of production will be made of the equipment. The equipment that is 
put in the hands of the employees or workers in order to do, uh, in order to do their, their, their job. In our case was the paddle, a paddle that had uh, 50 holes, you know, five uh, rows of 10 holes each, uh, where uh, all the beads could uh, sit and then we could count and determine how many of those were, uh, were red. Um, very importantly, the system also includes other things, uh, which is, for instance, uh, uh, not as tangible, but equally important. For instance, how every, everybody is measured. So we're talking about metrics or measurements. And in this case, not only is the measurement as in the count of red beads, but also how every individual is measured. Because here the implication was, all along, that uh, whatever is measured is a reflection on, of the skill of the person. And similarly, the consequences which are attached to these metrics. And so, uh, from measurements, there are going to be consequences. And you will remember that some employees were uh, stayed on the job, on their positions, and others were let go. And finally, the environment. What is, is there an environment uh, at work and this, of course, may mean a couple of things. One is the physical environment, things such as, you know, dust in the air, uh, temperature, humidity, etc. But also the human social environment. Are we allowed to collaborate? Are we allowed to try to contribute to make work practices better? Or what? What are we allowed to do? Like in the case of the simulation, really the supervisor would not let the workers improve the process. So uh, when you look at these components of a system, you will remember that nobody was actually working on the system, right? No worker was allowed to change the system of production. None of these elements uh, were under the, 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 the power. The, the worker had no power to change any of these things. And yet they were all expected to meet a target for very few red beads. In the case that I just showed you, uh, five. And uh, interestingly, however, they felt the consequences of not uh, reaching, of reaching or not reaching those targets. The next lesson is that the workers could not do better inside the system. This is a, a, a pretty kind of sobering uh, remark. Uh, the workers fail even though they had put into the job everything that they had to offer. This is a particularly uh, poignant remark by Dr. Duren from many years ago. Um, this type of uh, situation was also expressed by Dr. Deming uh, by saying, you know, a bad system will beat a good person every time. Now, we must take this in the right way. That is, it doesn't mean that we should quit trying as an, as an individual. It actually, what it means is that we have to fix the broken system first. Otherwise, what happens is that people just try and fail on a continual basis uh, to, to, uh, to produce things which the system won't allow them to, and to reach targets which are out of the reach, really. And uh, what's going to happen is that they may create even more damage. They may produce additional um, shortcuts, uh, band-aids all over the place, new rules con constantly changing. And uh, in addition to that, uh, socially speaking, their, their morale is going to suffer. It should be clear for us at this point that management is responsible for fixing the system. The next lesson would be that one of the favorite um, managerial practices, which is to rank personnel by some type of metric. In our case, we were ranking all the willing workers by the number of red beats that they got individually. And by the way, that's how we ended up uh, getting rid of some workers and keeping others. That actually serves no purpose. When you look at the, at the various charts of the, of the red beads that, um, that we have, uh, then you will see that, in fact, the production didn't get any better after we got rid of a couple of workers. And then we tried with what you might have considered our top performers, right? Which were now kind of freed up of the curse of being associated with low performers. And yet, nothing changed. So that was uh, uh, really uh, uh, not a real factor of production. The only result that actually happened from ranking personnel was to demoralize the workers. We got rid of people, and those people who were let go, they had no idea as to why they were let go. By the way, the ones who uh, stayed employed, 
in, uh, in the simulation, they also didn't know exactly why it is that they got uh, less red beads than the other ones. Um, they just got lucky, you know, and the other ones got unlucky. However, because we were measuring with numbers, but without real understanding of numbers, uh, we actually were creating real harm. Um, and, and so that is a, a lesson, a very important managerial lesson to be learned. Another key lesson is the fact that uh, the means to achieve a target must be provided. Okay? Uh, Demi used to say that uh, every target needs to have a method by which it can be achieved. Otherwise, uh, you're kind of forcing employees into all types of negative behaviors to achieve that particular objective, beginning by uh, focusing on their own jobs exclusively, and in doing so, you basically kill collaboration. And that also means that you're killing the notion that the company is a system, which is one of the key insights that we also want to get from this um, simulation. And then the next lesson, uh, precisely related to the notion of uh, system-wide action, is that system-wide action is needed for effective improvement. Um, when we think about what uh, the simulation allowed, uh, the workers, they were just simply thinking about what they, what they themselves could do. Can I um, dip the paddle in a different way? Can I uh, um, retrieve the paddle in a different way? Can I shake it in a way that will perhaps allow me to have a smaller number of red beads? Uh, really, they were put under pressure, and yet they were not able to succeed. The only action permitted uh, was just to, to, to focus on your own, on your own uh, area. Even, the, um, even the, uh, the, the supervisor really wasn't able to do anything effective. When you think about what the supervisor was doing, he was only focusing on the workers themselves, because that was the area where he had some, some level of influence, right? So what was the supervisor doing? He was training the workers, you know, 44 degrees angle, ludicrous. Um, he was praising them whenever they got low numbers, you know, high-fiving somebody for getting, you know, uh, uh, five red beads or, or even less, even better. Uh, but also threatening them by saying, look, uh, you really uh, own your job position in this company. That's a veiled threat um, because it also means that if you don't do well, then you will, uh, you know, lose your position in this company. And, and uh, in, in the worst, you know, most uh, infuriating cases even, uh, just by showing them posters and pretending that those posters could do anything for their performance. And nobody was thinking outside of the box, right? Everybody was totally focused just on, on that thing that they had control over. And yet what happened was that the, 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 the action that should have been taken should have been to act on the system of production outside of um, just what every worker could do or what the supervisor could do. Really the solution that was, uh, you know, kind of crying for attention here was why are we getting so many red beads to begin with? And should we not have done better incoming inspection and maybe even some negotiation or something like this with our suppliers in order to get less reds so that then we all could be successful? So to conclude, the red beads experiment shows management practices that are ineffective and harmful to the organization. In particular, managing by numbers when you don't understand what these numbers mean, such as trying to explain variation inside of a range of natural variation. Second, managing as if each worker has complete control of his or her performance, without realizing that we actually operate in a broader system that is far, far stronger than the ability of a single person to affect change. And third, ignoring the effects of the whole system on production results. So the only question left for you is, which are the red beads in your company and what are you going to do about them? Thank you for your time.